Hi there, and happy holidays. I'm Erla Skuladotir, and I am so excited to be here to talk about some of my favorite Icelandic holiday traditions and read you a story that will definitely get you into the Christmas spirit. Iceland has many unique Christmas traditions, such as the Christmas book flood, or Jóla Bókaflóð, ensuring that everyone has a book to enjoy during Christmas. We also love decorating our homes and city streets with lights to welcome the holiday season. Perhaps Iceland's most well-known Christmas tradition is the story of the Jólasveinar, or the Icelandic Yule Lads. Instead of just one Santa Claus, Iceland has 13 Yule Lads who come down from the mountains 13 days leading up to Christmas, one every night, to bring children gifts and play a few pranks. Today, I will be reading the original tale of the Yule Lads, titled Christmas is Coming, by the beloved Icelandic poet, Johannes Urkötlum. Let's begin. Let me tell the story of the lads of few charms who once upon a time used to visit our farms. They came from the mountains, as many of you know, in a long single file to the farmsteads below. Grilla was their mother. She gave them ogre milk and their father, Lepaludi, a loathsome ilk. They were called the Yule Lads. At Yuletide they were due and always came one by one, never two and two. Thirteen altogether, these gents in their prime didn't want to irk people all at one time. Creeping up, all stealth, they unlocked the door. The kitchen and the pantry, they came looking for. They hid where they could, while a cunning look or sneer, ready with their pranks when people weren't near. And even when they were seen, they weren't loath to roam and play their tricks, disturbing the peace of the home. Stiff legs was the first. Like a stick of wood, he came to prey upon the farmer's sheep and, following his game, he wished to suck on the ewes, but it was no accident. He couldn't, because his knees were stiff, not too convenient. Gully Gawk came second. Gray his head and mean, he snuck into the cow barn from his craggy ravine. Hiding in the stalls, he would steal the milk while the milkmaid gave the cow herd a meaningful smile. Stubby was the third called, a stunted little man who watched for every chance he got to whisk off a pan. And scurrying away with it, he scraped off the bits that stuck to the bottom and brims, his favorites. The fourth one was Spoon Liquor. Like spindle, he was thin. He felt himself in clover when the cook wasn't in. Then, stepping up, he grappled the stirring spoon with glee, holding it with both hands, for it was slippery. Pot Scraper, the fifth one, was a funny sort of chap. When kids were given scrapings, he'd come to the door and tap and they would rush to see if there really was a guest. Then he hurried to the pot and had a scraping fest. Bowl liquor, the sixth one, was shockingly ill-bred. From underneath the bedsteads, he hung his ugly head, and when the bowls were left to be licked by dog or cat, he snatched them for himself. He was sure good at that. The seventh was door slammer, a devil of abuse. When people in the twilight would take a little snooze, he felt happy as a lark with the havoc he would wreak, 
slamming doors and hearing the hinges on them squeak. Skeer Gobbler, the eighth, was an awful stupid bloke. He lambasted the skeer tub till the lid on it broke. Then he would keep gobbling, his greed was well known, until about to burst, he would bleat, howl and groan. The ninth was Sausage Swiper, a shifty pilferer. He climbed up to the rafters and raided the food from there. Sitting on the crossbeam, in soot and in smoke, he fed himself on sausage fit for gentlefolk. The tenth was Window Peeper, wicked, creepy twit who stepped up to the window and stole a peek through it. And whatever was inside to which his eye was drawn, he most likely attempted to take later on. Eleventh was Door Sniffer, a doltish lad and gross. He never got a cold, yet had a huge sensitive nose. He caught the scent of leaf bread while leagues still away and ran toward it, weightless as wind, over dale and hill. Me took the twelfth one, his talent would display as soon as he arrived on St. Thorlach's day. He snagged himself a morsel of meat of any sort, although his hook at times was a tiny bit short. The thirteenth was Candle Beggar. Twas cold, I believe, if he was not the last of the lot on Christmas Eve. He trailed after the little ones who, like happy sprites, ran about the farm with their fine tallow lights. On Christmas night itself, so a wise man writes, the lads were all restraints and just stared at the lights. Then, one by one, they trotted off into the frost and snow. On Twelfth Night, the last of the lads used to go. Their footprints in the highlands are effaced now for long. The memories all turned to image and song. I hope you enjoyed the story. Head to icelandnaturally.com to learn more about Icelandic culture and traditions and to take a quiz to find out which you let you are most like. When you take the quiz, you will also be entered to win a copy of the book, Christmas is Coming, and other fun prizes. Thanks for joining us. Happy holidays. Gleðileg jól.